Okay, guys, we're back here. Doing a little work on the bench. Um, so far, you haven't missed nothing. All I did was bring it in, and I, you guys didn't want to see all the measuring, so I said measure this so I could center it and get it on the, the base straight and line up the hinges. Um, I just got done drilling, pre drilling the, the holes for my hinges here. As you see, I had to mark them off. I saved all the original hardware, like I said. I got the one bracket a little better. I got to do nail it or pound it out with a hammer, but I got it straight at least. I got the gap back open. As you see, it though, it's just a little bent up, so I'm gonna just try to straighten it up and see if I can get it nice and flat so it'll work properly. Um, I got those drilled. I'm gonna put them in, put the hinges on it, and then I'm gonna paint it. I just want to make the holes and everything, get everything prepped and ready, so that when I I'm not gonna put the hardware on them, paint. I'm gonna paint it all. And then I want everything marked and ready so I could find everything and keep track of it and keep it marked so I know what's center. Um, once they start painting, you get past that point, then you forget about it, and that's so much harder. So if I got everything straight now, I know it should be good. I know my hinges will keep me lined up. So what I did is I went in, it's like 7 8 in from each corner to hang over the edge. Um, I'm making the hinges flush on the back. So, what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep the, um, the hinge is sort of hidden, but at the same time it's going to have enough of a low lip here to grab it to open it and close it with, blah, blah. Um, but I had to go through and get these marked first so I could center this because uh, this is 28, this is um, 29 and 7 eighths. So I had to take the measurements off and blah, blah, and change all that. But once you start painting real quick and then you start getting ahead yourself, then you forget and then you got to remark it. So I have to decide what I'll do is mark the hinges, get them pre-ready. This way when I put the hinges on, it'll already be centered for me. So I don't have to go back and remeasure it again and everything. Which, if you don't think ahead, that can really get you because then you mess your paint up. Because then I would have to flip this over on its surface like that, which is, this is the bottom side. And that's the top. So then after I painted it, I would have laid it down and then marked it all up and blah blah. So I'm trying to stay ahead of myself a little bit here, just to keep it nice and neat and clean and organized. So I'll show you guys what I'm going to do here. I'm thinking about getting out some paint here and start doing this top. Um, the bottom, I guess they're going to give another coat of white too and clear coat it. But I figure I'm always get this painted and cause I don't know if I'm going to seal it. I'll probably clear coat it because people are going to sit on it and they may use it for other things besides just sitting on. I mean, sitting on it wouldn't hurt it then, but with a clear coat on it, it's going to make it just that much more durable for whatever use they want to use it for. So, let me get this started and I'll show you guys how we're going to do the paint. Uh, give me a minute here to get everything set up and then we'll be right back later. Alright, we're back, guys. All I do is just coat it with white, the light, get it dry. Yeah, nice surface I left. I went very lightly. You see, I want these little grains of oak to show through when I put the gray on. I mean, it's not going to show through like that, but the white's going to go in, and it's giving me a grain effect is what I'm really looking for. So we're going to get a little gray. And this is how we do our gray. Just go in very lightly. Gonna blend this in. It seems like sorry. It seems like there's like a lot of gray here and a lot of gray there, and it's not. Because what I'm doing is just, I'm just taking a brush and I'm brushing it into the grains. And it's going to be layered, so where this isn't just like, this is a finished coat. This is just layers upon layers, and that's all I do is just keep mixing it in. I get different, I try to put in different amounts on different pieces or different spots. And that's what seems to give me the good grain. By going a little thicker in some spots and a little lighter in other spots. And at the end, you'll see what it comes out. It's basically just, I'm just mixing the grains, or the colors, right here, just so I can get me some grains started. 
and by following the grain never go against the grain because you're gonna look like yuck you're not gonna like it what's gonna happen is some little tips you're gonna catch on each little piece of grain and cause the paint to build up there but when that happens you end up with all these little globs and then that's where you get the mud effect and you get all the problems but this here basically is just causing me to have a grain it's giving me my grain effect you always want a little darker at the edges so I always start from the end and work my way to the center and basically it's drying as fast as I'm putting it on almost because I'm putting it such a thin coat and spreading it all around so what happens is when it comes to the center it's a little harder but you just want to sort of like sort of brush it in there and then just start working it so you're going to have different levels and different spots that are going to be darker and lighter and that's really what wood is I mean that's what causes the grain and I I mean I never it's no two pieces have been ever the same it's that effect best thing I can tell you is do it to where you like it you like it pretty much everybody else probably will and it's just about like I said there's no no two piece of mine I mean some of them they look like they're the same because the colors are the same and I mean but they're really not it's each one's had a different layering or a different effect or more paint or less paint different colors I mean it's basically the gray black and white and that's what I try to stick with because it seems to go really good one highlights the other gives it that little bit of depth to it and I just use a I mean like I said very little bit of paint and I dip it in the paint and I wipe it back off and I just hit where I want it to get them grains to come out and these little woodwork brushes as cheap as they are they seem to do the best I mean it's because they got them as you see it's they're not really even they're by no means I really should not chew but um the, the the point is it just it gives you helps give you grain too and this here is all my undercoat colors I'm gonna have white in here the gray comes in and then the black's gonna set it off by giving me a little more depth to it and I may keep going going to the layers build up more like here I got a little dense in it so I'm going to try to do is yeah it's going to look dark there but when I come back with the black then my grain will come back and I can even wipe some of this off if I don't like it I mean that's what's nice about this a wet cloth will bring it right back down to white if I want it I mean no big deal thing really is just keeping it really smooth very light keep just rubbing it in rubbing it in going long ways I mean I could leave it like that even right there and that would look just as well and then I could go back over again with the white and we could have a gray and white which I think will go really good too I know it would so we're gonna let that dry just for a second I got the little blotchies couple it got a little muddy there but that's no big deal not at all now I could add water to this and really work it if I wanted to sometimes that's what I do if I don't if I think it's like oh, it's too muddy but I'm gonna try the black on here first see how that comes out putting a little bit of black in this to make the line stand back out which is basically what I do I make it just rebuild the grain up and make a new grain on it but by sticking to it you want the different colors of darks and lights in here that's what's going to give you the depth in it. The depth is the, the reason they have the wood because this way when you put the colors on the wood let me show you here. We'll take a little black and I don't even worry about washing it. I don't have to. I am going to pick up a little bit of water though afterwards. Let me grab a cup. Once 
some clean water here. My other cup's got too much colors in it. So we just want a little bit of water to dip our brush. You want this very thin. I mean very thin. Now you got a little black on the side there. Okay, all I did was just barely touch my brush to the water. So when my paint goes on, and all I'm doing is just, I mean, as you see, just the bristles, just a very little bit. And usually I'll take something like that, smear it, because I don't want it glob. I want the brush to have it all over it lightly. And then I'm going to start adding my streaks. Now these you want a little longer streaks. We're done with the chew for a minute so you guys can hear me. Okay, we got more on there. Brush it all over the brush. Now I got the brush all covered in it. Now I'm just going to go with long streaks. And I'm just slowly working this in. I'm not trying to paint it right now. As you see, my ends are getting the lines in it. So the more, more I push, the more paint coming off and giving me these fine little lines in there which are blending in now see and that's what I'm doing with it going over with dry brushing it then to where the paint's gone now I brush that all in there I'll pick up just a little bit more water I want to keep my brush very clean basically a little bit of paint dab it all over my brush now we got a little heavier brush now now we got more paint on here so we're going to go to a different area see we're going to get darker marks so we're going to pull on that edge. And this is going to give me that wood effect on the edge. So it looks like a grain coming in. Now I'm going to start pulling them lines out a little bit farther. Flip my brush over. Because i got more paint on that side. And we're going to pull that in. And try to keep going with the longer strokes. Because I don't want them really to end there. I want them just to fade away. So that when I come the other way, they all fade away in the center. But at the same time, I don't want to have stop marks and straight marks on it. I found out from doing it a couple times that where your brush stops, where you leave a mark. So that's why I found out where you just keep brushing and brushing and that sort of blends them all in. Now we're starting to come together. You guys see that good? Hope you guys see that. Let's see. Yeah. Now we're starting to get a grain on there. As you see it's a little lighter over there. I haven't got to that side yet. But this is the effect we're trying to get. I'm just going to keep doing it until I'm satisfied with it. And that's all it is. It's that simple. A little bit of paint on there. Okay, we got a little more than I wanted that time. But that's okay. It's never too much. Like I said, when you dab it here, all you do is mess it all up, push it all over the bristles. So now I'm covered in it. All my bristles got it. Which you can, those are my grain, basically. Now I'm going to poke this in. And I can make these as dark as I want. I can make them as light as I want. The more black you leave in it, the darker your grain is going to be. So it's going to make it look basically older. And what I found is what this does is it picks up that end and gives that end your edges down here where you're... Like say you, you cut it or whatever. It gives it that look of a piece of wood, the end of a piece of wood. And if you've ever seen an old piece of wood, the ends are the ones that always look that way for the most. They get That's where everything builds up. And you basically got to just like look at different pictures and see what you're looking for and what you're trying to achieve. And then just get a piece of old wood, throw some paint on it, and go to town. Now we're going to go with a little longer stroke because I'm trying to blend all this together with those. And all it's doing is just put little bits of paint down. And little bits of paint are what's going to start causing my grain effect. Now, what's nice about this is, I mean, I know they used to have brushes out or a roller or something back in the day. I remember seeing that you could roll it and it gave you a wood pattern. I found something after that when I was painting one time that duplicated that, but darn if I can remember what it was. So what we're going to do is we're just doing it on our own, basically. And what I'm doing is, too, is a lot of this is like... um. A lot of them paint things I see, them guys use a, um, a black wax at the end to do this. 
and they rub it in and then it, it picks up all the high spots and low spots and then your black clear and then you go over it with another clear but mine's permanent and built in so it's not going to wear with the finish and that's basically what I wanted is a more permanent thing than just a clear coat in it so what I did is sad practice with all my signs making each sign a different color a different shade until I got I mean the ones that are in here are just the ones that I did that came out good I mean my last sign came out good a couple of them did but some of them when I did them they were like mud because it, it didn't mix well so that's why I found out the less paint and just brushing it in letting it work and come out and putting them little layers on one at a time and sometimes it'll leave a mark that just sets it off I mean just by putting that brush to it and letting it do its thing you never know what the effects gonna be until the end and that's sometimes what's so neat about it because that effect at the end of the effect at the end is what you're looking for so you never know what it's gonna be until it happens I mean to make that old wood look is not as hard as it seems but see how the whites underneath there now the whites coming back up because I'm putting darker colors on it so you're getting to see the white now I could have left this darker and done just the gray and black which would have made a little darker sheet but I wanted a lighter color I want that like it was painted and the, some of the paints worn off and there's different layers on here and that it's more or less already worn but to a nice way I mean this gray wood grain stuff people are doing now is just unbelievable and when you see it from the store a lot of that's just computerized uh, stickers that they just put over the top and then you buy it and it's cheap wood fiberboard board with a bunch of freaking stickers on it and I mean that's just is awful it's because it don't look good it's it's too shiny barn siding and barn wood is not shiny not in any way I mean like this I'm gonna put a satin finish on it but that's pretty close right there I'm starting to really like that I'd really like to get a little bit right here a little more brush stroke in there break that up and I think that's pretty close 